Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Where did we reach in the text of Al-Ajur Rumiyah? Where the author says, Ismun wa fi'lun wa harfun jaa li ma'na. A noun, a verb, and a particle, a meaningful particle. A name, an act, and a meaningful letter. We broke that down. And then he said, which is where we are now. The noun is known by such and such. He's going to say the, the identifiers of an Arabic noun. So he says, فَالِسْمُ As for the noun, so that fa, that's a harf atuf. It's a conjunctive particle. We'll say for now. As for the noun, يُعْرَفُ it's known, yani, it is identified how bil khafud by the is by al khafud genitive case or genitive, yes, case. So now you heard so much about nominative case or subjective case, you heard so much about accusative case, genitive case. It's called in Arabic khafud. It has another name in Arabic, which is jar, jar, al khafud or al jar. You know that, inshallah. So if I ask you, what's the other name for khafud? You're going to tell me jar. And if I ask you, what's the other name for jar? You're going to tell me khafud. Anytime, if I ever see you in your life, inshallah, you'll tell me that. So that means know it. So this state of i'rab is special to nouns there will not be a verb that's in a state of khafl or jar and a particle never even has a slot so when it comes to the case nominative case accusative case genitive case yani rafa or nasub or jar or jazm in Arabic, it's only going to be between nouns and verbs. It's mostly nouns in these. It's mostly nouns that we are finding in these spots. And sometimes verbs. This one is particular to a noun. So that's why it's an identifier for a noun. So you say, for example, Marartu Bizaid. Marartu I passed by Zaid. Marar to be Zaid. Inshallah, it's so clear for you. Even if you can't speak Arabic. Marar to be Zaid. I passed by Zaid. So we know that Zaid here is a noun, actually. It's an Arabic noun because it's being influenced. It's under the influence. It's under the influence of a prepositional particle. B. So there's no way to put a verb there after that prepositional particle. But if you remember something we took in Qatar nada that's nice. So I think that's clear for you, inshallah. This becomes more and more clear for you the more you study Arabic and practice Arabic. Uh, why I'm saying that? Because maybe as I'm talking to you and I'm saying to you, the way to identify an Arabic noun is by the genitive case, the, the, the state of khafl. Maybe that's like just words for you. So if it's not very familiar to you what I'm saying to you, it's just because you need more practice in Arabic, more looking into Arabic sentences and thinking about them. So, khafud. Uh, like, let me give you another example. You say, al-malu lahu. Al-malu, the money, is lahu, his, or for him. The money is for him. Lahu. Lahu. So here, this is a pronoun. This ha is a pronoun. Bamir. It's connected to a harf jar. Islam is a harf jar. It means for. The money is for him. Ah, so that means that this pronoun is under the influence of a prepositional particle. Prepositional particles render words genitive 
يعني مجرور then therefore this uh, pronoun is actually a noun then therefore a pronoun is actually a kind of noun that's why there's not eight parts of speech dividing parts of speech into eight categories is a poor division Because then you can say, why should a pronoun be a separate part of speech, but a proper noun is not a separate part of speech? How come a common noun is not one part of speech, and a proper noun is not one part of speech, and a pronoun is not one part of speech? How do you use, put these two together and separate this one? Please. If you have a question, feel free, please. So, فالاسم يعرف بالخفض والتنوين and by a tanween here make sure you're following the irab فالاسم the noun يعرف it is known it is known that's passive voice it is known بالخفضي by now this bat is going to be influencing many words so you always want to know why there's a dhamma on the end of this word or kasra or fatha that's if it's a word that has a variable ending if it's a word that has a variable ending you want to know why it has this one so بالخفضي Al-Khafud, why has Kasra? Because of the back. Insha'Allah, that's clear for you. What tanwini? Why not what tanwinu? Or what tanwina? Because following. Yani, you have here, this wow means and. And this wow acts like a circuit. It's connecting this back to this noun here. That that is directly connected to the first word. Bil khafdui. It's not connected to the second word. So why the second word has a kasra too? Because the wow is the circuit. What tenwini and the tenween. Tenween. Uh. So this word tenween. Just to keep it easy for you now, tenween is a noon. Tenween is a noon. In fact, notice the letters here. Noon, wow, noon. What does that spell? Noon, wow, well, noon spells noon. Tenween means you're nooning something. You're nooning it. How do you noon something? You're going to noon a word. You're nooning a word. Some people, a lot of people, they say new nation. Tenween is new nation. So I'll just say it's nooning. I will noon this Arabic noun. That means put a noon on it. Or I cannot noon this noun. It's a ten uh, a tenween. It is a noon, but you don't write the noon. You just say it. It's a noon that you say and you don't write. So you say, for example. Zaydun. Zaydan. Zaydin. What's going on here? Uh, that Dhamma, this Dhamma here, that's the sign of 
Rafa had the word really been marfor. It's not really, really, really marfor here because it's not even in a sentence. I just wrote it as an example. But supposing it's in a sentence and this is what it is with Dhamma there, that means it's marfor. And this ten, this uh, haraka right here, that Dhamma, that's the ten ween. A lot of translated Arabic literature doesn't tell you that. They say Tanween is two Dhammas or two Fathas or two Kasras. That's inaccurate. What's right is to say Tanween is a noon that you pronounce and you don't write. That you say and you don't write. Tanween is a noon that you pronounce and you don't write it. And instead of writing a noon, if we're going to write something, it's going to be an extra haraka. And there's several kinds of tenween. We can't go into that now. So tenween has actually many functions. It depends on the kind of word it's on. So, Zaydan, one of those is the sign of Iraq, and the other one is the Tanween. And as for this Alif here, we'll come back to it, inshallah. And same thing here, Zaydin. So one of those is the sign of Arab and the other one is the Tanween. So if you find a word with a Tanween, then that's a proof that the word is an Arabic noun. Not every Arabic noun can take a Tanween. But if a word has a Tanween, then it is an Arabic noun. So that's one of the identifiers of an ism. So the author says, Falismu yorafu bil khafud. The Arabic noun is known by the genitive case. What tanween and by nooning. Wadukhulil alifi wallam. And by here, dukhul, the entrance of the alif and the lamb. And so I'm going to translate duhul here as prefixing. By prefixing al alif wa lamb, which is the Arabic definite article, al. You learned already. They differed about the name of this particle. So in this text, al ajurumiya. The author calls this particle al alif wa lam. The, art the author calls this particle al alif wa lam. But some call it al. And they said this is stronger to call it al. Because that's what you do for all the particles. Like you don't say al fa wa ya. You just say fi. Like that. You don't say al mimu wa noon. You just say min. So they said, likewise, you don't say al-alif wa lam just say al. So, if you see a word with this al, then you know that that's a noun. Like here, al-kalamu, huwa al-lavu, al-murakabu, al-mufidu. Look here, bil wadri ba harf jarn, and we know this word, wada is, is an Arabic noun. Not to mention also has al, so we just found two signs there that this is an Arabic noun. Well, I I'm actually jumping ahead for you. I'm actually jumping ahead for you, so let me read the author's next statement. He says, Wahruful Khafud. No. 
wa hurufi al-khafd wa hurufi al-khafd that's a mistake right there so look here they put a dhamma here that's a mistake let's see hamza yusuf's copy here just the arabic before i look at the translation he said al kalam huwa al lafz al murakkab al mufid bil wad'i wa aqsamuhu thalathah ism wa fi'l wa harf ja'a li ma'na fal ism yu'raf bil khafd wa tanwin wa ah right there though that's something else so here what i've learned is that you don't separate the wow from the word you write them together like one word and that the wow should not be at the end of the line by itself i have not learned that there's a saying that this is valid and i never saw it personally in in anything that i would regard as professional like and like whoever did it whoever worked on it they like knew what they were doing in arabic so as far as i know this is a mistake here he said wa dukhul al alif wa al lam and also here again wa wa huruf al khafd but he has the correct haraka right here correct wa huruf Here our copy has wrong haraka. This is our copy we're relying on here it has wrong haraka there. Wa hurufu that changes the meaning. That basically resets it. Resets the sentence. Uh if you've been following now and I just told you resets the sentence say yes. That's right. I get it. I get it. Right? So let's look here. Ismun Dhamma, state of Rafa, that's the highest Iraq. Wa fi'lun wa harfun ja'a li ma'na. We'll starting here. Fal ismu, as for the ism. So it's subject to the sentence. Now we want to talk about it. So it has a dhamma there. Yu'rafu bil khafdi wa tanwini. It is known by genitive case and nooning. Wa dukhuli and the prefixing the alif and the lam. Wa hurufi and the prepositional particle. Particles. Wa hurufi al khafd and the prepositional particles. So it's following, really, should have a kesra there. If you put a dhamma there, it resets the sentence. So it's like it's a new subject. Wa huruf al khafud and the prepositional particles. Now I'm looking for if there's supposed to be a dhamma there. Now I'm looking for a predicate. So it doesn't work here. So that's a blunder. Wa huruf al khafud and the prepositional particles. So how I got ahead What did I mean by that? Cuz I said to you up here. We're looking at this word bil wadha. I said here this ba is a sign that it's a noun and this al is a sign that it's a noun. Uh but the author didn't yet when I said this he didn't yet tell us that the prepositional particle itself is a sign for a noun. What he told us was the genitive case being in a state of genitive the state of jar that is the sign yani the position in the sentence not the particle itself and some of the new students of knowledge they would study al ajr rumiya and they would say why did he say in one instance why did he say 
Bilhafel here. That's a sign of jar of of a noun. And then he said, "Wahurufil khafud here," and that that's a sign of a noun. Why did he split those? Because they're not the same. When he mentioned khafud the first time, he's talking about the position in the sentence. He's not talking about the particles that put it there. There is a way for a noun to get into the genitive case without a prepositional particle. Like, for example, Allah Ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So you have here B, Al Ba, prepositional particle. So that's going to be a proof for us that this word here is a noun. That's a proof in itself that this word is a noun because of the prepositional particle that's influencing it. And it's in a state of jar, so that's why it's going to take a kasra. Bismi. But the name here, Allah, it is what? Mudaf ilayhi. Mudaf. Mudafun ilayhi. It's part of genitive construction. Second part of the genitive construction. That's going to be majrur also. So it's in a state of jar. So that's a proof. It's being in a state of jar, not the prepositional particle here. The prepositional particle here is influencing this word, the word it's attached to. And then this word is influencing the word after it because it's mudaf. This word here, ism, is a mudaf. And it is influencing the word after it. So the word after it is mudaf ilayhi, majrur. It's in the state of jar. Because it's mudaf ilayhi, not because of the prepositional particle. So being in the genitive state, in the state of jar, is an evidence that that's a noun. This one I found in my own research is consistent between Arabic and English. Genitive and jar in meaning I don't I didn't personally perceive a difference between them. But if you compare rafa to nominative and nasub to accusative in the two fields, Arabic grammar and English grammar, I don't find them exactly the same. We can talk about it when we get to it. But I didn't find a difference between in meaning between jar and genitive. Jar in Arabic and genitive in English. Okay, so the mere genitive case state of jar is the proof that a word is a noun. And then you say here Al Rahmani. Bismillahir Rahmani. Why is this genitive or majrur? Because it's an adjective. The adjective follows the case of whatever it's describing. Ar Rahman here, this adjective, Ar Rahman, is describing Allah. So it's going to follow. It's going to follow what it's describing. Bismillahir Rahmani. And same thing here. Ar Rahimi. Also, 
it is describing Allah. Bismillahir Rahimi. In meaning Yani here. So the 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 state of Jar itself is a sign that we're dealing with a noun. And also another sign that we're dealing with the noun is fil khafud. The prepositional particles themselves. Mm. Wait. Let me take a look at Hamza Yusuf translation before I go further. Okay, so he says, the noun is known by khafud. So I didn't translate it here. It could be translated, I'd say. If you said here genitive, it's not going to corrupt the meaning or imply something that shouldn't be implied or leave out something that should be included, as far as I know. He says, by tenween. So here he repeated this because the, the word by here is the translation for the bat. Bil khafdli, by khafd. Then, what tenween and tenween? He repeated the word by in his translation, but it's not there in the Arabic. He didn't translate tenween. I could give him that because it's not really translatable. This is exclusive to Arabic. He says, and by, so he repeated it also, the addition of the definite, of the article of definition, the, the addition of the article of definition. So that's passable, I suppose. So he said addition. He said addition. He, he translated duhul as addition. So duhul. Usually someone would translate it as entrance. I said prefixing. He said addition. It's not far. Of the article of definition. So. I suppose that's passable. He means the definite article. Then he said the particles of khafud are as follows. No. Now, the way this is translated here is translated like the way we crossed out. Didn't I say to you right here, if there's a dhamma here, this would reset the sentence. That's what he did right here. He reset the sentence. The particles of khafud are as follows. This translation does not follow the i'rab of its metan on the same page. The way that's translated is like what we have here that we crossed out. And what I learned is that this should be kasra. That's how I took it. And the way he has it here, that's right. So then the translation should be, if I follow his way, it would be, the noun is known by khafud, by tenween, and by the addition of the article of definition, and by the particles of khafud, comma, which are, because he said, what he and they are, uh, and the way this is worded, it makes it unlikely that this should be a bumma, that this should be a bum, should be kasra. Because if this is resetting the sentence, then you don't need this wow here. You just say, The prepositional particles, they are 
But with this wow here, it means this one here, wahurufi, is following what's before it. And the prepositional particles. Wahia, and they are. So I'd adjust that. MashaAllah. We'll stop there for now, inshallah, so we can take our time with these prepositional particles, inshallah ta'ala. Do you have any question I can answer for you?